to welcome Mike Carter. So Mike has spent 46 years in healthcare science as, and I'll take a deep breath and see if I can get it all out, medical laboratory technician, medical laboratory scientific officer, biomedical scientist, BSc student, PhD student, clinical scientist, I'm going to have to take a breath, biomedical scientist, scientific education and training manager, and placement program lead, and visiting lecturer and examiner, and working and studying in Liverpool, Saudi Arabia, Guildford, Southampton and London, but now Mike's retired. Or shall I say semi-retired? <laughs> so we're really grateful to have you here today, Mike, instead of playing golf or uh, retired. Cycling. <laughs> um, but as I say, he does remain active and taking various IBMS roles. So thank you, Mike. Um, before we start, I just want to thank um, Matt at the Institute for inviting me to uh, come and speak to you today. I don't like standing behind one of these, but unfortunately I haven't got me remote one, so I'm pinned here because I'd like to walk around. Um, so I just want to thank uh, the Institute as well for asking me here. Um, you might be wondering what those two boxes of chocolates there for. I will be asking you some questions later on. <laughs> but we're here to listen. No, you're here to do some work as well. Um, We've had a lot of information that you've been given and the first speakers. Brilliant. Diamonds. Absolutely nuggets for you to take on board. Everything that was said before, commit to memory. And everything that you're going to hear after me, commit to memory. Whether you want to commit your mind to your memory, well, it's up to you. But commit it to memory. What you're hearing today is going to help you. Now, it's down to you whether you act on it because everybody's an individual. But please, the information I have heard up to now, the information that I know will come on later on, you've got to really grab hold of them, guys, and make the most of it. This is your future. And do whatever you can to make your future successful. I can't use this slide anymore because I'm now retired. <laughs> and I'm, I'm an ex-PHE employee. But... I have been in biomedical science for 46 years and I've loved every single minute of it. And it is, and people have said before, we deal with specimens. And one of the things that we do get wrong in labs is talk about specimen numbers. We've done so many blood cultures, so many urines, so many biopsies. We should be really talking about patients and people. Because at the end of every specimen is a person. Never forget that. And one of the things to think about for when you guys go out there and become biomedical scientists. You're dealing with somebody's specimen, treat it with care and attention the best that you can, because unfortunately, one day, it could be your specimen. And you would want your specimen treated with the respect and the care and the attention that you guys will actually be coming to do in your careers. So, very briefly, my background, won't take too long, training and applying for placements. So, I started off many, many moons ago um, in Liverpool, Blood Transfusion Centre. I failed my A-levels, not a good start, but once someone who wanted to go to medicine and be a doctor. Um, I then got a job in Liverpool Public Health Lab, did loads of other stuff. ONC and HNC was the exams at the time, one day at college, four days in the lab. Then I went out to Saudi Arabia to work in a microbiology lab out there for eight, three years, came back to a, a BSc at Surrey University, and then I did my PhD. And my PhD was on the basis of the love I got for chlamydia while working in a diagnostic lab. <laughs> and when I went out to Saudi Arabia, I set up the chlamydia lab out there based on the experiences I got in Liverpool. He was talking about pathways and um, careers. <laughs> I've done other slides and the presentations and my career is all over the place. It's about being in the right place, right time, something that, oh, I wouldn't mind having a go at that. Never be afraid to have a go. If you don't have a go, the answer is no. Never be afraid to have a go. If you're able to do it, have a go. You never know where it might, where it might take you. I then went to Collendale um, in London as a clinical scientist to set up a chlamydia pneumonia reference service, which wasn't really taken off in this country as it was in Scandinavian America, but it had done its death in terms of the biology, and there was a lot of interest in coronary heart disease, which just wasn't part of brief. So then I went back to being a biomedical scientist, 
Note by a medical scientist, never ever call yourselves a BMS. There is no such thing as a BMS. Don't put yourselves down. We are biomedical, or you will be biomedical scientists. Be proud of it. You never ever hear a clinical scientist call themselves a CS. Always say you are a biomedical scientist. Um, I then did lots of stuff at Collendale and I got really interested in education and training. Um, 13 years as the placement program, set up the program at Collendale, which we'll talk about later on. And five weeks ago, I retired. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm loving every minute of it. <laughs> One permanent holiday, but it will be once I've got the house sorted so we can decorate it and move and keep my wife happy. <laughs> so, our, our placement program, just to touch, we started it off 13 years ago. We had 778 applications over those years. We've ran 286 interviews, and we've got 181 placements. So including the 14 this year, we have got 181 students come through the doors of Collendale. And we've had 27 universities represented over those years. So how are you going to get placements? Why get one? This is your journey. You're starting off. Five weeks ago, I stopped mine although I'm still doing stuff at the Institute. But this is your journey. And I know we've got a mixture of, have we got any first years in? Don't be shy. Second years, final years. There's something for everybody, okay? But I'm gonna find one there, I can't do a placement. Ah, don't close the door, okay? But this is you, this is starting off now. So, education and training. You are all doing a degree as part of becoming a biomedical scientist. And it's the Health and Care Professions Council who set the standards that you, as biomedical scientist students, must follow, and my colleagues as biomedical scientists practicing must follow, and which I follow, and to some extent still follow, because I'm still going to be registered. And that's what you're going to complete. Oh, this is the old one. Oh. Okay. Sorry. I've got to change it. There's a new version. And I was going to be up today. Oh, do you know what? I'll put it on the training program for Wednesday. I'm doing another session on Wednesday. I'm updated it for Wednesday, so I forgot about it. Not that I'm doing you guys down here anyway, okay? Retirement. It's retirement kicking in, yeah. But that's not the that's not the, the front page anymore. But the principle's the same. That's what you're going to be completing on placements. Or, if you don't get successful as a placement, you get a trainee's post later on. That's what you've got to complete, that logbook. Because this is what you're going to be aiming for. The Certificate of Competence. This is a license for you to practice, showing that you can fit to practice and you apply for registration. People think, oh, it's automatic. It's not. You've got to apply to the HCPC for registration. But before you can apply for registration, you've got to have your degree and you've got to complete the portfolio to enable you to get the certificate of competence to put the whole lot together as a package, which you've heard before from previous um, presenters. This is you. You're at university. You're going to get your degree. You want to get some lab training on placements. Complete the portfolio. Go back to university in your final year sit your finals and then register. And that will take you four years. Now I know there's some final years here sitting here thinking, well, I haven't, are any of the final years not done a placement? So a few of you, don't be put off, okay? The one thing about it is never let anybody say you can't. If you want to do it, go out and do it. Don't anybody put you off. So this four years could be a bit longer for you guys. But it's still feasible, it's still doable, and loads of people have done it. So why do a placement? There are loads of benefits to doing a placement. Going to meetings, completing the portfolio, getting out of bed on time to go to work. CVs enhanced later on, transferable skills, all the stuff you're doing at university, you'll be putting together on placements. And you'll be going back to university a better person. It's been statistically proven that people go back at final year after placements go up by one classification, as well as the individuals changing in terms of the character and being outgoing and their skills being a lot better. 
Contacts, network. How many times have we heard that today? <laughs> Networking. The number of students at Collingdale who've made contacts and ended up working in their laboratories or going to do work for them. Or, while on placement, going to spend two weeks in another laboratory, because Collendale is not a diagnostic lab, it's predominantly a reference and an R&D. So we've had students on placement who have made contacts and spent two weeks in a diagnostic lab while on placement with us. Networking. Never be afraid to ask. As my students know from me, if you don't ask, there's only one answer, and that's no. Never be afraid to ask. Practical skills, theory to practice, possibility to do postgraduate work, future employment. On placement, you're doing a year's interview. And unless you do something absolutely disastrous and you can't wait to see the back of it, if a job comes up, you might be in a really strong position to go for it. So never be, you know, go, go for placements. An informed decision. So, can I have some water? Yeah, of course. Uh, never be afraid. I don't need a microphone. Never be afraid to go and do a placement and during your placement think, oh, this isn't for me. That's not an issue. Everything you do on placements will go on your CV for later on. Even if you don't want to be a biomedical scientist. One of my placement students has become a um, working in a mortuary, in a, a funeral parlour. So she become a funeral director. All the skills that you do on placements will be used later on. You can make an informed decision whether it is for you. Publications, we've got loads of students at Collendale who are first named authors on peer reviewed papers. Second year undergrads, first name on a publication. These are the opportunities that could come your way. References. Again, unless you've made a disaster of your placements, what a fantastic reference to have from your placements. And once you've done your placement, you can go straight into a band five job. Or, and I'll show you later on, you might be lucky to get a band six job. And standard operating procedures, and we've had one or two at Collendale, turned out to be a bit of a date agency as well. <laughs> so, We've had 136 successful verifications in our portfolio. We've got 15 taking place now, and we've had no unsuccessful ones. So, how do you go about looking for placements? There's different ways to do it. One of the things that you could do is get a map of where you live, draw a circle of where you would be prepared to travel to, and then look for every single hospital in that circle. And get in touch with them. Be proactive. I'm doing a play, I'm doing a degree, blah, blah, blah. Do you take placement students? Yes, we do. The advert will come out. No, we've never really thought about one. I know students who have ended up doing a placement at a hospital where they never even thought about having a student until they asked them about the placement. Be proactive. Draw this circle. Find out where these areas are, where you want to go. I'll be using the next ones as an example from the Collendale point of view. But the underlying principles are going to be absolutely right across the board. Attention to detail, fill in what you've got to fill in, keep on board with the time frame. This is an example of the, the advert that goes out to every university round about Christmas time for the placement programme at uh, Collendale. And I don't know if Hannah, who's my successor, will be keeping it the same. But well, this is the similar one that we've used for the last 13 years. It will depend on where the hospital is, what they put out as an advert or an um, electronic application, or they might have an interface between the placement and the university. There are so many different ways of doing it. But this is the way that was done at Collinville. Some of the things to think to, to look at, and I normally got my own presenter, but oh, there you go, yeah. Mm. So, it's only for people doing a biomedical science degree. It's amazing how many people have applied to Collendale and not doing biomedical science. I don't know how they found the advert in the first place, but anyway. <laughs> After placements will be sitting finals. Final years apply for the placements. After placement will be sitting finals. Why are you applying you sat your finals? Read what the words are on the paper. Don't just look at them. Read what it says. 
One of the things that we do is if we have four different documents and one of the, the statements has to have a word count. If you don't put the word count on, you're not following what it is that you've got to do. Attention to detail. That could translate to when you're actually starting in a hospital and you miss something off. And that positive is now negative, or that negative is now positive. Attention to detail. Only the following file labeling, okay? If you don't follow that, where's your, where's your application going to go in the bin? You are in a competition. The bottom line is you are in a competition with loads of other people to have this one placement or one of 12 placements or whatever. And this will even translate to the final years we're gonna to have to look for jobs to be able to do the portfolio. You are in the competition. You've gotta make your application stand out for all the right reasons, not for all the bad ones. Follow what it says, the closing date and the time. Applications that do not have them will not be considered. Read what the stipulations are on the application, because this can actually translate to when you actually apply for a job. So this is an NHS one, the closing date, okay? That's when it's going to close. You might be able to get a job description, depending on where you go for a placement, they might have a JD and a person spec. And that's where you'll find out exactly what you're going to be doing and what they need. Now if they say that they need something, it's essential, don't bother going for it, because you haven't got it, okay? If it's desirable, then you might be able to go for it. Phone up, say, I haven't quite finished it. I know it says essential, but I'm nearly there. Is it possible? But, you know, use a bit of common sense with all of these things, because they do translate to when you go looking for jobs later on. And never put stuff off. Oh, um, I'm going down the bar with my mates tonight for a few bevies. I'll put the application at the weekend. No, because by the weekend, it could actually be closed. I remember at Collendale for a, um, a, a job at Collendale in one of the labs. Within an hour, I think it was, of the advert going live, they had about 100 and odd applications and they closed it. So they closed it before the actual closing date, because they had so many applications coming in for it. This is what can happen. Never put it off. If it says it wants it in by such a day, don't wait for such a day, do it now. Because you might find, <coughs> think of, uh, on the buffer, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, you might find that they will actually close it before the date. So when you apply for it, some of the things, I am self-motivated, I want to become a biomedical scientist, recently completed four works of clinical microbiology, enjoyed it immensely. Sell yourself. That's what, it, that's what these things are all about. However, make sure you get it right. Dr. Mike Carter, dear Mr. Carter, I don't care what you call me, but make it consistent. <laughs> Attention to detail, okay? Some of them, really good ones. A-levels, work in the centre, some experience at the pad. However, my name is, don't put that in, so we have to discuss, you're sincerely. Dear Sir Madam, ends up with yours faithfully, not sincerely. Attention to detail. Another, some good ones, really good ones. However, centre for infections, not titled properly, it should be uppercase C and I. And so, Esther will own. That just means really amazing, yeah. right? Thanks, <laughs> Steve. Don't do it. Attention to detail. You are applying in a competition. Be remembered for all the right ones, not for all the bad ones. This was one that came in. It was sent on the 20th of February, and the closing date was the 13th of February. Guess where that one went? So, make sure that you've got all really good information in there. Sell yourself, but don't go over the top. Any work experience that you've had, put it in. Transferable skills. You work with people on a Saturday in a, in a shop, you've got good communication skills. You might be working with some other form, you might be working with figures or numbers as a part-time job. Put that in. Attention to detail. Sell yourself. It's a competition. All these are really good. I fully enjoy microbiology. I want to complete the portfolio. That's the things that we want to hear. Okay? 
So, the visits. We talked, somebody said before about going to sea. I can't express enough how important it is to try and go. Certainly when I started off in the labs, in the NHS, it was actually almost required for you to go and have a visit. I put in maybe, because my wife said to me, well, not every lab will ask them. You don't know until you find out. Knock on the door. I'm applying for this placement. Any chance I can come for a look around? Because when you go, you might find that it's a bit antiquated and it's still a bit, you know, living in a bit of the past. Doing a really good job, but it's a little bit, you know, do I really want to be here? Or it might be a state of the art, you know, super duper PCRs, etc., etc. You won't know until you go and find out, rather than on day one of your placement thinking, oh, where's the back door? Okay? Go and have a look. See the people. You've had people say before about go around and try and speak to people. An informal interview, we used to call it. So, be prepared before your uh, interview as well, okay? We had somebody come round in the interview. Tell us what we do at Collendale. What do we do at Collendale? Hematology, no. Transfusion, no. Histopathology, no. So we went all the way through them, and they finally got it that we were doing microbiology. Wherever you're going, find out what they do. Be prepared. Be prepared. If you don't, if you don't prepare, be prepared to fail. If you fail to prepare, be prepared to fail. So what successes have we had? Loads. Loads of people come back to work for us. Loads are still with us. Some of them are still are now supervisors of placement students. And one person you'll be hearing later on is actually my successor. Hannah was a placement student at Collendale, came back, worked for us, became a supervisor, and is now the scientific education training manager and the placement program leader at Collendale. So, I know I've just been told I've got to get off. There's, a, there's a, a, just a few things. Band, band six. They got a job as a band six straight off. Because all the experience he had on the placements. Not a band five, one step up, band six, because of the placements. Really enjoyed myself, even with the portfolio stress. There's no stress in doing the portfolio. Um, did the portfolio, I couldn't have done it. Really enjoyed myself. Six years ago, in this very building, in the floors up above, this second year undergraduate student at Collendale on placements won the best poster for virology. So we're talking about posters national. She won the best poster in virology. And then later on in 15, Sophie won the virology and Tom came a very close second in the Bacti one. Wow. Second year undergrads, placement students, who knows where it might take you? Do a placements. No negatives. If you do think of any, let me know. There are loads of benefits. And there are no negatives to doing the placements. It's what you make of it. Um, I'm a keen cyclist, okay? And I know I've missed one off there. He now got the welter in 2011 because the guy who won it has now been determined he was taking drugs. So now Chris has gone up. And does anybody follow cycling? Yeah. And he didn't do too well this year because he blown his nose in the dope family and he didn't <laughs> an injury. And I always use this about Oscar, it's success as a science, if you get the right results. However, it's not a quick fix, it's steps. You take those little steps, you succeed, you go on to the next one, the next one, the next one, okay? But never give up, never let anybody ever tell you that you can't do it. Never let failure stop you. I failed the A-levels, I failed the, I failed the microbiology paper in my HNC, I failed a paper in my degree. I think I've done all right. Don't let failure put you off. And never listen to anybody who says you can't. If you want to do it, prove them wrong. Go out and do it. Never give up. Um, as you can tell, I'm a scouser and other cool supporters as well. We had a unfortunate incident in 96. Now, these two people here, were representatives of all the families. They never gave up. They wanted the truth to come out. Um, and this was the last event that I went to and I saw them. So never ever give up. If you want it, go for it. 
So the take-home message is do your placements. Who knows where it might lead to? And there's a lot of people over the years who have enabled the program at Collendale and everything else that I've done to be successful. And I am four minutes over. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's it from me. Oh, 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 sorry, yeah. Right. How many sunflowers were on the on the screen? <laughs> Just have a guess. Fourteen. Oh. Nine. I'm afraid I've got to take the chocolates with me. <laughs> there was eight sunflowers and sorry, what? Did you say eight? Yeah. Did anybody around <laughs> yeah. did, did she say eight? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> how many pictures? There was eight sunflowers, but how many pictures? How many pictures? Nine. Just pick a number, guys. <laughs> no, down. One more than five. Six. Who said six? That's it for me. Lovely. Mike, thank you.